morning everyone, this is Trisha and welcome to my channel. Today I am going to be doing a stained glass wind chime. I really wanted to do a sea glass wind chime and I thought I had bought sea glass, but what I actually bought was stained glass. So I don't want to say it's sea glass and it really isn't, but I just wanted to let you know that that's what I thought I was getting. <laughs> but anyway, I did find sea glass but it was very thick and then I saw this other package so I grabbed it because I thought this is perfect and without uh, realizing it just says stained glass on it so let me show you what uh, these supplies are going to be but first let me do a little shout out to Maria Ramirez because she is the one who suggested I do a uh, DIY and a wind chime now I had someone else I feel like someone else had asked me the same uh, thing and I said I would do it uh, but I don't recall who that was, and I've looked through my comments. I did find Maria's. Um, so this is what Maria wrote. She writes, Hello, Trisha. Hope you are doing well. I am. She says, Super cute Cinco de Mayo wreath. That was the tissue paper wreath that I did last week. She says that the flowers look like poppies to her. And actually, a lot of you all said that they looked like poppies because when I was cutting out the little tissue flowers, I said they look like something, and I have no idea what I said at this point, what they look like. But yeah, they look like poppies. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I don't know what I said. Okay, she says she loves all the bright colors. And she was wondering if I could do a DIY, if I could DIY some wind chimes. And she says, big hugs, big Texas hugs from South Texas. Well, big old Texas hug back to you, Maria. And uh, so that's what I'm doing today. Let me show you the supplies that I actually have down here that I thought I'd use and uh, so that we can get to crafting. All right, so I've got this package and it says mosaic stained glass on it. If you can see that uh, packaging there, let me get this light on it. There we go, like that. And this is what the package looks like. This was an $8 uh, package, but I used the 40% off. I got it from a, um, Hobby Lobby. Okay, so you might want to look for something like that. I did want uh, the one that said sea glass because I think it was a little more uh, see-through kind of a glass. Uh, but like I said, I only found it like in big chunky bits and I didn't want big chunky bits. I wanted these thinner ones. So uh, I went ahead and I went with this and I think it'll work just fine. Now, I also have a box here of some marbles. There we go. My mom gave me this box. She had this accumulated and in that box there's some big marbles such as this one. And look at that. Just some big marbles like that. And they're really pretty. I'm going to look through and see like what I can find. But there's also some smaller ones. And they're also really very pretty. There's lots of these green ones. But within them there's others that have, you know, other colors. Red, a peachy or some that are kind of see-through. They have that, you know, like Coca-Cola glass uh, color. And then they have little bits inside. So this is just something that uh, to let you know that you can use any of these type of supplies to create uh, the wind chime that I'm going to do. I also have, I have tons of beads, but I went ahead and I pulled out this particular box of beads because I have an assortment of colored beads and some of these are like a, this a mother of pearl type of beads and I have some little shells here as well. And uh, I think these are all glass beads, by the way, in this uh, section here. And like I said, I have tons more, but this has enough of a variety of colors that I thought kind of coordinated with what's in this bag. So I may use some of this. Now to hang uh, all the items, once I've got them in strung up some way, I'm gonna put them on this little piece of wood. This is called chola wood. It's a product of Mexico. Look at this. You could use like a piece of driftwood or maybe go outside and get a nice little branch, you know, and clean it up and sand it down a little bit, make it look nice. Or if you rather do a ring, you can use an embroidery hoop and then wrap it up with, uh, say, some jute or yarn so that it doesn't look, you know, just like a embroidery hoop. You could dress it up a little bit or paint it. So that's what you could use uh, to hang your items with. To create my my items that are kind of gonna come in, coming down, I'm going to be using this wire. It's called a silver cord and it's a 20 gauge wire. And it comes in a spool and it's nice and flexible. Uh, I got this one because I thought it was thick enough to maybe hold the weight of that glass pieces, but also not too thick that, that all you see is wire wrapped around the pieces. And But I also got this um, monofilament. It is sort of like a, a see-through type of uh, thread. 
And I wanted to find one that uh, was not the stretchy kind because I don't want it to be stretching out. But you can use like fishing wire, you know, just get a, don't get one that's like too thin. Get a one that, uh, you know, has enough strength on it that it doesn't break easily. This is a point three zero millimeter, so, or actually on here it says, no, that's just the length. The But the uh, size of it is a point three oh millimeter. I'll now hold it like this so maybe you can see that right there. Okay, uh, also I got some jump rings and I'll show you why I'll be using little jump rings. That's just to attach pieces once I create them out of the uh, glass or the beads or the marbles. But then I also got these uh, eye pins, which I, I know I have plenty of them and I know I have enough jump rings in my little box here somewhere. But I went ahead and I got some more. So just get yourself some little kind of like jewelry making supplies uh, to put things together and you'll figure out what will work for you. And then I've got myself a nice roll of jute. I do have some jute uh, put away, but I have the one that I have is either too thin or too thick. So I went ahead and I grabbed this other size. This one is a, uh, Let's see, it just says it's a three ply because the rest of it is a length. And a lot of this stuff I got it at Hobby Lobby, by the way. Pretty much this I got at Hobby Lobby. Uh, you can get a lot of the stuff at Michael's. Uh, maybe you'll be able to find some things that you can use from the dollar stores or Dollar Tree. Okay, so this is the tools that I'm going to be using. I'm going to need some needle nose pliers, so I got these and I got these pointed ones also. I got my scissors. <laughs> I've got my <laughs> trusted wire cutters. I don't think I'm going to be using my glue gun for any of my project, but I have it ready and I have glue sticks ready. It's plugged in just in case I may need to maybe seal a little knot or something. Okay, so let me get to started on how I want to put some of these little pieces together and then uh, I'll work on a whole bunch of them and then I will come back and show you how to put them all together so that we can then hang it from this particular base. All right, everyone, since I don't know exactly how many of these pieces I'm going to end up using, what I'm doing for now is I'm going to go ahead and sort out the pieces that I feel I'm definitely not going to use, and I'm going to put them back in the little bag. I feel like these pieces are too big. I also feel like I could break them if I wanted to, but there's some smaller versions of it already here. I think maybe this, this, well, this one is close enough to that. That kind of is sort of the same version as these two, so I can put those away. Maybe these are also too big. I like this orange one. I feel like I want to use that one. And I've got those two. This turquoise has a pretty kind of a swirly look to them. So that's basically what you want to do is you want to pick out the pieces that you know you're going to use. Some of these are like really, really small little pieces. I know I'm not going to use any of that, so definitely you got to put that back in the bag. Okay, the reason that I'm sorting them out uh, and I'm pointing this out is because they also feel kind of dusty or powdery. I don't know what it is, but uh, you're going to want to maybe uh, rinse these out and dry them up so that you don't have that little dusty powdery bit on them. I've gone ahead and I did that with the marbles and I was kind of sorting through them and look at, I found this beautiful one. Look at this beautiful marble. I don't want to use it though, but I thought I'd show it to you because I thought it was pretty cool. So I'm going to save that one off to the side because I feel like maybe some of these marbles could actually be somewhat of a collect collection or something. I don't know why my mom had it. She obviously didn't remember why. So, and she had tons of collections of things. So she must have known there must have been some worth to them, but uh, I pulled these out. I don't know that I'm going to use all of them, but I did clean them out. So I have six here to choose from, put them back on the napkin so they don't roll around on me. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do, you guys. I'm just going to pull out quite a few pieces of this, sort out the really big ones and the little ones, put them back in the bag because I know I'm not going to use them. But then the other ones, I'm just going to rinse them off and then pat them dry so that uh, I can start off with nice clean items, clean my hands as well. And then I'm going to get to the next step and I will be back. All right, so I've gone ahead and I put together two pieces here, actually three pieces. But then I took two of them and I put them together as one piece. So I took a piece of uh, the stained glass and I just wrapped wire around it and then kind of tightened it right here, wrapped it up on itself and created a little eye for it. And then on the bottom here, I added a jump ring. You can see that right there. 
I did the same thing with the marble. Let me tell you, the marble's a little tricky to wrap up because it does slip around and it's, so it's you know, really round, the wire slips around. So you're gonna have to wrap it around a few times. I didn't wanna wrap it too much because I want somehow the edges of this other glass to hit against the glass of the marble and on the beads, of course. So you don't wanna wrap them up too much, but just enough where, you know, they're sturdy on there. And then I created this a longer piece right here with the eye pin, I put some beads on it. So let me show you how I did that. Now, let me tell you the sizes of the um, jump ring. The jump ring are six millimeter round heavy gauge jump ring, six millimeter, okay? The uh, eye pin is a three inch or a 76 millimeter, the little sizes right there, the silver part right there. If you can see that, 76 millimeter, three inch eye pin. Let me take this little staple off just to see that maybe you can see that as well. All right, here it tells you the size on that silver part. Right there. Okay, so that's what those sizes are. You can use a bigger size a jump ring if you like. Um, I would buy the wire. This is a 20 gauge. I would buy this wire, like I said earlier, so that it's sturdy enough to hold the weight of whatever you're putting on it, like this little marble, okay? But you want to keep in mind that you don't want it to be too thick that when you wrap it around all these times, you're going to pretty much hide the item with so much uh, wire. So make sure that the wire is, is a size that it'll compare to the item that you're wrapping. Also, these little jump rings, I also wanted to buy them so that they were approximately... This, you know the you know the thickness of the little wire of the jump ring was kind of the same as the wire that I'm using to wrap around here. If you can see the little jump ring there on the bottom, and then the uh, wire is kind of the same size. I added a jump ring also at the top here. I didn't need to do that, but I went ahead and I put one there, and then I have put one down here, one of the wires, so that I could hang this uh, this other pin on here. Okay. Let's get to it. Let me show you real quick how to wrap. I'm going to show you how to do a marble. It's really hard to do a marble. It takes time, you guys. So maybe you want to skip that. But what I did is I left enough wire up here because I didn't know how much of it I was going to need to wrap around and create my little, uh, you know, my little eye. Uh, to, whoa, that one fell. Let me grab another one. Okay. <laughs> that's what I mean it's really tricky so what you want to do oh my goodness do you want to wrap this around I'm gonna use my fingers for now to create that that round that rounded shape okay and then you can get your your marble and you also want this wire to be pliable that you don't have to necessarily use uh, you know some sort of plier to pull it and shape it but that you can also use your hands your fingers so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap try to wrap around the circumference of the marble once I have established that size then just twist that end that you know that short end around because you're going to have this on here you're not going to cut off a piece yet you're not going to cut it off till you know that you've wrapped around enough okay so now what you want to do is you just want to keep this after you've wrapped it around just keep it upward this little, you know, kind of this uh, shorter end <laughs> that you started off with. And my, I also have cream on my hands, by the way. My hands are really dry and I put some moisturizer on them. And they are so slippery because it wasn't this bad the first time. So I'm wrapping it around now, going in another direction. And then I'm bringing it back and again, twisting it on the wire. Okay, so just keep doing that till you've got enough. I think I need to wipe my hands because they are so slippery, you guys. Okay. This is the end that's wrapping around here. And then just wrap it as many times as you need to. And each time you do, when you come back up on here, twist it with this other end. Okay, so let me go ahead and estimate a length here and cut it off. And let me test this. If it doesn't fall out, great. 
If it does, then I'll wrap it all around one more time because some of these pieces, and I can tell that this little piece here and this little piece kind of want to open up and this one over here just wants to slide off over here. So I'm going to take this long piece and I'm going to slide it underneath that one piece that wants to keep coming off that way. I'm going to wrap it in there, pull on it so that it pulls it back. And I think that's good. Okay, so then I just want to twist it a bunch of times. Get this, have like a little, nice little twisted neck there. Okay. Oh, that's my kitty cat. <laughs> I just gave him some little uh, T-R-E-A-T-S. I can't say the word because he will respond to it. I just gave him some, so I don't know why he wants my attention. I think he wants some some love wherever he is okay so then i'm going to take these little little flat ended needle nose pliers to then press down on that little edge that i cut because i don't want it sticking out and scratching on myself or really this is not a jewelry piece that i'm going to be wearing it's going to be on a wind chime and if this might be just a decorative wind chime that i might hang inside or i might hang it outside though on my pergola so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so now I want to create a little loop so that you want to bend this kind of like a 45 degree like that. See how it's shooting out to the side now? And then get it on a point where, you know, these little pliers that you have like this that are circular like that, they're like a point and they have a very thin point and they get thicker as you go. Decide how, how big of a loop you want. If you want to use the jump ring, here, let's slide one on there as sort of a guide to how big you should make your little loop. Slide it on there so that you know that when you get your wire, you can get it about this little point there. So we can go ahead and use that as a point of reference. And then just wrap this around and that creates that little loop on there. Okay. And now you can trim off the excess piece of wire. And you're going to want to do the same. You're going to press that little edge that you cut, press it flat, and then just shape this so that you have your little, little loop straight up like that. And then you could hook it onto maybe the bottom of this here. You can use a jump ring to hook them together or open it slightly, slide it into the little loop that's on there, and then that would be a piece there, or it could be attached to the square one here, to this one here. Okay, so that's how you wrap up the marble. And you do the same thing with these flat pieces. You're gonna wrap them up the same way. The thing is, it's not gonna be sliding around as much as the marble was. So that you can decide by you know watching this, do I want to have that much of a trouble with a marble or not? I didn't use the little the smaller marbles because I felt like they're like way too small to try and wrap you know wire and the wire seemed too thick for them. So anyway, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna get a piece that's long enough to later create a loop with it and enough to twist around and such, and then just start going at it. Start twisting your wire, but you want to make sure. Even if you wrap it a couple of times like that, always come back to this one and tie them up. Okay, let me go like this, and then up, and then back up to this one and twist it on. Now test it, and if that holds that piece and it's not going to fall off, then awesome. So I'm just going to twist this a little bit, make that cute little neck. So it looks pretty, that little neck right there. Okay, so then I can go ahead and trim it off. Take my pliers and let's flatten that end. Oh my gosh, if you could look at my face right now, my mouth is contorting into, <laughs> into every which way. Okay, so I got this bent, but I realized that little end did not get cut off sufficiently, so I'm going to use the little plier wire cutters on this one here to trim it. There we go. All right, so now I've got this, the piece going straight up. 
So then I'm going to bend it at a 45 degree angle. Bring this in enough where it's going to be about the size that I want my loop to be. There we go, right there. Twist it around. And there it has a loop. And then there I can trim it again, just like I did the other one. Oh, not this one. This doesn't have wire cutters. This one does. Let's see if I can get close as I can. Cut that off. Bring that little end so it'll close and just make that one little loop that I want. Just round it off a little bit more. All right, there we go. And there we have the loop on there. And then I take a little jump ring. You don't have to do it. I'll go ahead and use the same one that's on here. Little jump ring, it has a little opening. Now, when you open jump rings, don't open them like that. Okay, so go. I'm having so much trouble because I don't have it next to my face, but rather closer to the camera. So just twist it one way. These went this way and this one went that way. Okay, so opposite from each other so that your little jump ring let me get this on here is now open can you see that it's now open right there and then you could slide it into one of these little bits underneath here and now to close it instead of going you know like one going this way and that one going that way this time they're going to go together so the little ends meet so just twist it back so that it's closing and just to make sure that they're aligned use your flat nose pliers here squeeze it and that closes a little jump ring there we go so now you have one at the bottom to hang something from there so let's create one of these little long pieces here and this is all optional as to your supplies that you're going to use. Maybe you want to just make a whole bunch like this. And then once you've got them all made, you know, hook them with each other like that. Okay. And then you just make a whole bunch of them if you want. Maybe a small piece one in the middle and then a big one or so forth. And then just make maybe three strings if you want. Okay. So I'm going to take this. Uh, what is this called? This is called an eye pin. Is that right? Let me make sure. Yes, it is. When I did a lot of jewelry, I used to do jewelry making. And um, I knew all the names of things, and you know, you don't practice things, so that kind of, it kind of goes out of your mind. Okay, so I got some little beads here. I just grabbed some, an assortment of little beads, and I think the very first one I'm going to put is that one. Uh, kind of like this little orange one here. Let's see if it'll fit. Yeah, it does. And then maybe. This purple, this little flowery shape one. Let's try this yellow one. I think that's enough. I don't have to put this clear one. And then I'll just put this turquoise one. I'm just seeing to, to make sure that I have enough left here so that I can make a little loop with that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go up a little tiny bit, bend it, move up forward to make a loop. Oops. That keeps sliding out of my hand, guys. My hands are still too slippery with... <laughs> oh, my goodness. With The thing is that this isn't holding it anymore, so I'm letting it go so it slides out. Okay, so now let's make our little, our little loop because my hands are too slippery. Okay, now I'm going to hook that one. Should I hook it to the, yeah, to this one? There we go. Now it's hooked on there. Well, maybe not. Let's hook it back on. Come on, honey, get in there. There we go. And now I'm going to trim that little end there because it's too long. And then I can twist it back. Close that little hole. I'm going to make sure with the needle nose pliers that they are meeting. Uh, you know, because sometimes you think you've twisted it down, but it's it's still there's some space there where things can slide through, and you don't want that. It shouldn't be that much trouble, you guys, but I'm holding it so far away from where I can look at it properly. Oh, there we go. But there we go. 
That's another piece, so I've got two long pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and create some longer pieces of these as well. And then I'm gonna start connecting them, like this, for example. I can have this one here and this this other one have the, the little marble at the bottom the next time, like that. Okay, so then the other thing I want to create is I wanna create a little charm so when I have my, here's my little, my little piece of wood where everything's going to hang off from here. Okay, this is going to be like this and all the wind chimes are going to hang. Or all the pieces of the wind chime are going to hang. So I think I want three rows like that. You can make as many as you want, but I think the pieces that I have here are big enough uh, where they can be a little bit far apart, but you know they can dangle and they can hit each other. So I think three of them, maybe four, will be good. And then from the top here, I'm going to bring this twine here, okay, the jute. So when I bring it together like that in a little triangle so that I could hang it up here, I want a little charm or something hanging right here. So I'm gonna create something like that as well. And I'm gonna create it with the same idea using the eye pin. And I'm gonna put some beads or something here. I'm gonna see if I can find a little charm that I might have in my other box that I can use. And when I get to that point, I'll show you how. how I'll do that so that you get an idea. Okay, so I'm gonna put together some pieces and then you know, put them together like that, make some more so that I have enough uh, strung items for my wind chime and I'll be back. All right, you guys, I've gone ahead and I've completed the uh, little strings. I'm just, I'm just gonna call them strings for now. Little string of beads and glass as I want them to appear. Now, like I said, if, if you don't use the marbles and just use more of these little glass bits or just do the little beads and if, as long as they're glass beads you know, when they cling together they'll make a nice little sound uh, and then uh, of course uh, maybe you can even use stones instead of uh, sorry it's my laptop don't worry about that noise uh, instead of uh, using uh, marbles or things like that you can use you know like little stones but use co different colored stones those would look really pretty unless you like it all you know a certain color but you can also mix them up with colored beads and that would look really pretty okay so I've gone ahead and I've already attached one of these so that I would know exactly how to do it before I you know tell you of course uh, just to make sure that it was going to work out and it did uh, but before I finished that I went ahead and I made an extra uh, here with one of these uh, eye pins I put some beads in it just like that curled a little end here so they don't come out and I attached one of these little kind of like shell bits uh, these have little holes right here on the sides on the tip so that the string or wire will go through them like that and they'll hang like this so I put one on a little jump string now I didn't use these jump strings because that probably wasn't going to be big enough because of how far down the little hole is on here so I just grabbed another one of these uh, little pins here put it through the hole oops can you see that it's going through the hole right there so I just put it through the hole and then just rounded it up like that and then I use these little pliers to kind of bend it and round it some more on both sides and then just trim off the excess just trim off the yellow bit of excess there you can make it really nice and round if you want which I kept kind of like you know messing with it till I got it to a nice you know like rounded shape that's all you do, and then if you have any pieces overlapping, just trim them off. I'm not going to do that on this one. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to attach it to the very bottom one here. Okay, so now that I've got it open, I've got to close it back up. Make sure. Okay, go ahead. I said I wasn't going to, but I am going to trim little pieces there. And Oops, let's get it back on there. But you get the idea. Wait, let me put it this way. You get the idea of what I'm doing. I'm just, you know, just stringing along more little pieces just to make it decorative. There we go. Push them together so that I have this one looking like it hangs just a little bit lower than the other two. And this one I'm going to hang it. Let's move it over in here once I've got that jute coming right here just to give it another little look up here. You could use you know some of this and create one of these little dangly bits with um, the wire 
to create a little charm right there. You can do whatever you want. If you find a little charm that you like, maybe a little sand dollar, if you go with some maybe some little shells in there, uh, you could use that instead or whatever you find. Okay, so now I'm going to attach these bits to the, the wood part here. So I got this filament. And what I did is I cut a piece that was just long, like really long, maybe 12, 14 inches, and then just loop it through the top end that you want to hang up here, and then bring, or you could actually wait till after you've tied this onto here. What I did is I brought it through one of the holes and just pushed it, pushed it through till it came up through another one of the holes. Now, if you don't have these little holes to push through, what you could do is you could just take this, and once you've wrapped it through here, once you've strung it through there, you can just wrap it around and knot it around the the pole nice and tight, which is what I could do right now. Let me go ahead and just do that, just for the heck of it. Let's do that because the chances of you finding the same exact piece of wood, you know, maybe you'll find one that doesn't have a little hole. So just knot it as many times as you can to make sure that it doesn't move around. And I said I had my hot glue gun ready just in case I needed it, which I do need glue because I would want to then add some glue uh, right here where I knotted it so that the, the knot doesn't come undone. But I don't want to use the hot glue gun on this because I feel that's going to melt it. It's going to melt this little plastic filament, and that's just going to, it's not going to be helpful at all. So I'll probably use some E6000 to glue it down, but I also am going to put this twine here, okay, to create that little hanging bit. So uh, once I put all that twine on here, it's also going to create a barrier. So this is not going to slide off of here, which is really pretty much my concern is that that's going to slide off, and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this other one on here. Uh, like I said, um, let's see if I can string it through because the, that first one that I did was fairly easy to string through. I just got lucky with it, but now the chances of it stringing through those little holes. What I did is I pushed it through one of the little holes and it came out another hole and then I knotted it. But now it's going to be, the knot's going to be in a different position and I wanted it to be down here. So let's, let me try this, see if it'll, ah. Uh, I can do it anyway. Let's feed it through. Oh, it's coming out over here, which is perfectly fine. Okay, I got it to go through. So now I'm going to put it through here. And I want it to attach right about right here so it'll be unaligned with these other two. So when I bring it and I knot it, I want it to knot right there. And then just knot it a whole bunch of times. Just keep knotting it. It's pretty much, you know, almost invisible. I mean, unless somebody gets up real close to it, they won't really see the string, but you don't want it, the knots to come apart. So make sure you knot it quite a few times. Once you're satisfied, you know, go ahead and trim it. Maybe leave a little long bits on it. They're not gonna show and, and just, um, a little bit of glue on there now so the next step would be for me to do my little string so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some hot glue right here on the end of the little stick let me put the raw edge right on the glue and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tr roll it around and ever so often put some more glue so that it this all attaches once I've got enough roped around and maybe come over it one more time then I'm going to go across to the top here and then measure how much I want going down this way. Once I've decided and then I've got enough room for my little charm that's going to hang there, I'm going to put some glue, put that down and do the same thing and wrap it around, put glue as I wrap it around so it'll stay and then just trim off and then make glue down that little raw edge so it's not, you know, showing off over here. Bring it back up like that and then just wrap this little metal uh, ring that I created up at the top here around the the very top. I think I'm going to do something different. Let me go ahead and uh, loop this around here, bring it up, down, and then wrap it around the other side, and I'll be back and I'll show you how I'll attach that instead. All right, so I put the string on it so that I can hang it and this will all be hanging down like that. 
But now I want to put a little charm, and I don't have to put a little charm in it, but I really want to do that. And I thought, well, I'm just going to hook it onto here. But then I thought, well, this I needed to hook onto something, and I don't want the little charm, you know, like, you know, the little metal bit is just going to be like that. And I don't want that. I want it to dangle off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to center this as best as I can to create like a little loop right here. So I'm going to take this part and make a knot right about there so that I have a big enough knot that can go over like if I have a plant hanger it can go over the little little hooks on it or something smaller or a nail or something outside where I want to hang it but the little hole is big enough to go over something okay I'll make a little tiny hole so now I've got these little little knotted bits and since I haven't you know created a little a little ring here for this to be hooked. I still have the little part here. I'm going to use this long piece to kind of pin it through and let's see because <laughs> that's the idea that I have. Let's see if it'll work. This one's coming off. I have to fix that. Okay. Yeah, I think it will. Yeah, actually it does. Just pin it right through. Right through it. I pushed it down into the uh, knot there so it'll hang right off of it right there so I'll bring the end that I haven't trimmed off and then just twist that around the top of that very that one bead that's up there just twist this around it hold it and then I'm going to trim off there we go use these flat ones to fold that or bend that sharp end there we go so that hangs right there in the middle and I like that okay what I don't like is that this other piece just came right off I obviously didn't close it enough so let me do that and I shall be back all right, everyone, I have completed my, what was this? Stained glass wind chime. But it turned out to be beads and marbles, too. So what do you think about that? I'm still going to call it a stained glass wind chime. So there you go. So thank you to Maria Ramirez for the DIY suggestion. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments down below. Also, uh, let me know if you're going to use something different to create a wind chime. Uh, if you're going to be using my idea or maybe use something different. Uh, also, I'm going to give myself a big old thumbs up, everyone. Make sure that you also give me a big old thumbs up. It's very important to my videos that I get likes. So um, make sure you leave your nice comment down below, as I said. And subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, thank you to everyone who has been subscribing. Hit that notification bell so that you get notified of my videos, which Tuesdays and Fridays. And once in a while I do a vlog that I throw in possibly on a Saturday or a Sunday. So there we go. This is my stained glass wind chime. Does it make any noise? I didn't even check it. <laughs> it does a little bit. Who knows? I might hang it inside. It's so pretty. What do you think? Maybe in my window, my kitchen window, where the morning sun comes in and maybe, you know, shines through the marbles and the beads. All right, everyone. There we go. Make sure you share on your social medias. And as always... Enjoy.